Hello and welcome to the Botanic Gardens here at Cambridge University. My name is Peter Jackson Main and I'm going to be showing you some of the best herbs to relieve stress and anxiety. We're not just going to show you the plants, we're going to be talking about how to identify them, their physical characteristics and some of my suggestions as to how to prepare and take these herbs in the correct dosages. We'll also be talking about some of the amazing benefits that these herbs have in other directions, their general ability to protect against inflammation, against oxidisation and against ageing. Nature has given us some fantastic remedies for stress and anxiety. Plants that are effective and safe for anyone to use. And as we all know, there's no shortage of things to stress us out in today's world. If you're looking for a plant that can handle almost any aspect of stress and anxiety, look no further than this one. This is wild oat, Avena sativa. There are two ways in which we can use this plant. What we see here are the flowering tops, sometimes called green oats or oat straw, oat tops. Um, and they're best used as a tea, in fact. Very easy to do, just harvest the tops, uh, usually rub them between your hands, drop them into a cup, pour oil, boiling water over the top, and brew up for about 10 or 15 minutes. Very, very easy to do. And the flowering tops are best for anxiety, uh, but they also help to regulate various components of the nervous system and nourish the nervous system at the same time. So they're kind of modulating the neurological pathways to deal with things like depression, anxiety, um, and also just really strengthening up and uh, improving one's mood, strengthening up the nerve system generally. Now the other way we can use them of course is to let them ripen into oat seeds. Oat seeds have much more of what we might call a nourishing or nutritive property loaded with B vitamins, for example, and several important minerals as well. So obviously we know oats as a nourishing uh, food in, uh, in porridge oats, for example. These are very closely related. And as such, as a wild plant, this is all obviously cultivated in a garden here, but as a wild plant, very, very good at strengthening, not just the nerves, but also the adrenals. And of course, the adrenal glands are incredibly important for the way that we handle stress. And it turns out that the plant is also a really good endocrine tonic generally. It, uh, it affects the thyroid gland, the sexual and reproductive organs, as well as the adrenal glands, and it's able to strengthen and improve our responses to stress generally. Best way to use the oat seeds, in my opinion, uh, that's the mature seeds, is to have them ground into a powder, first of all, and you can buy oat seed powder from distributors online, etc. And then mix like a teaspoon of that powder into a milky drink, pour, up, pour hot water over obviously, and it's a great nighttime uh, rejuvenating, but also relaxing, and actually it induce uh, a good night's sleep as well. Avena sativa is a fantastic sleep remedy. So very broad applications in terms of stress management and the nerve system, and uh, really easy to use, really easy to get, easy to use. Uh, I would recommend it to anybody who's suffering from stress. So we couldn't really talk about stress and anxiety without mentioning lavender. And we're looking for things that are easy to find and easy to grow and many of you will probably have lavender growing in your garden already but do you know what to do with it? So this is another herb that's very much involved with the treatment of stress, anxiety, depression and anything to do with the nerve system actually. And of course it has, you'll know it for its wonderful scent, lavender soap, lavender oils, etc, etc. So one of the ways of um, telling whether it's any good, by the way, is to take a flower and just gently squeeze it between your fingers and you should get some of those oils seeping out between the fingers and, and actually absolutely heavenly um, scent there. 
There are actually many, many species of lavender and the good news is that they're all pretty much effective. So you don't have to go and buy the right one. The one that we use in herbal medicine is called Lavandula officinalis, but there are many, many others, a Lavandula angustifolia, for example, uh, which is particularly an English variety as we sit here. Um, but the, the simplest way to use these, two things I want to talk about. One is to make lavender tea, and this is something really nice to come home to if you've been out and you've come back and you're a little bit tired, stressed out, a little bit wired if you like, tired and wired, then this will give a wonderful, refreshing, fragrant tea. You don't want to use too much of it, it's very strong, the essential oils in lavender are particularly strong. And by the way, one of the ways that essential oils work on the nerve system is that they actually affect the brain via the olfactory nerve. Aromatherapists know this of course, so one of the ways that we use them directly is by smelling them. So the smell of the tea to start off with is going to start comforting you and then when you start drinking it you're going to get some of that essential oil action inside you as well. It's not necessary to drink drink lavender essential oil by the way. Um, that's strong and it can actually upset some people, it can irritate the lining of the stomach for example. So we don't need to do that. There's enough oil in these plants just to give us a nice cup of relaxing and, uh, and kind of um, I'd say uplifting. It's a very good uh, thymoleptic, that's a word that means mood enhancing. The other way, of course, of using lavender is to make a lavender pillow. For this, you want to harvest the flowers, dry them. You can do them just by laying them out on a sheet of brown paper uh, in the air. You don't have to sun dry them or anything like that. They'll dry off in a couple of days. And then just kind of break them gently up, uh, store, store them in brown paper bags for, um, uh, for the best results. But also make them into what we call a lavender pillow. Lavender, of course, is another herb that is fantastic for sleep and we all need our sleep when we're dealing with stress. So for this, all we want to do is to get a calico or muslin bag uh, with a little drawstring maybe, put your lavender flowers, your dried lavender flowers in there, uh, sew it up or, or pull, it, pull it tight and then pop it under your pillow at night or even on your pillow next to where you're sleeping. And this means that those essential oil, uh, that essential oil goodness will uh, be available to you all night long during your sleep, re regenerating, refreshing your brain and easing away that anxiety of the previous day. Now you can of course use the essential oil of lavender as well. Um, it's many, many uses for that actually. One of the uses which I really like, it's a bit off topic, but is to actually apply it to burns and scalds. It will take the heat out of them amazingly. Little tip for you there. But one of the things that I like to do with it is to put it in a sensor. Uh, and this is either a little bowl with a tea light underneath it that with, you put water in the bowl, a few drops of lavender into the top of that, and it's gonna diffuse into your whole room. You can have it with you at night in your bedroom. And again, it'll have a similar effect to the lavender pillow. Lavender really is amazing at calming the spirit and uplifting at the same time. Now, here we have a really strong contender for dealing with stress, and this one is particularly important because it's one of a few herbs that grow in this country, in, in the UK, that is known as an adrenal tonic. Now, I don't know whether you've thought about this, but stress doesn't just affect the nerve system, it also affects the adrenal glands. It literally draws energy out of the adrenal glands and the adrenals can get very, very uh, deficient and depleted uh, by stress. So this is a plant it's very much associated with convalescence, actually, because another thing that depletes adrenals is being ill for any length of time. So it's a plant that's very much involved with restoring strength, restoring uh, vitality and endurance and stamina as well. Of course those are all things that you really need in spades when you're undergoing stress. So this is Borago officinalis, borage, otherwise known of course as star flower. You might recognize the flower if you're familiar with it, it's quite a familiar image. Uh, but there are a few uh, plants in this family that you might want to avoid for internal use, so I'm going to make sure that we know exactly how to recognise it as well. Now it's not difficult because of all these wonderful sprays of blue flowers with the, the kind of reddish pink uh, uh, stems on the, on the flowers as well, but look a little further down and what we see is these thick green stems really richly populated 
with tiny little hairs or spines they're actually quite rigid they'll give you a bit of a uh, a scratch if you particularly if you if you squeeze a leaf in common with many of the other plants in this uh, uh, category actually in this family actually the, and the family by the way is the Baraginaceae. it takes its name after the plant so hairy stems hairy leaves very very robust hairs or spines even we might call them and this wonderful um, contrast between the the pale almost luminescent green of the leaves and the stems and the rich reds blues and purples of the floral structures now this is a plant that also yields star flower oil um, you probably uh, you, you know that remedy I don't know whether you knew that it came from this plant and star flower oil has a lot of uh, nutritional properties, particularly gamma linoleic acids or GLAs, which uh, basically is omega-6. So if you think about omega-3, 6 and 9, this is the 6. And omega-6, of course, is an excellent anti-inflammatory as well. And in terms of anti-inflammatory action, and again, stress is a big cause of inflammation, we would want a plant that was able to deal with that. So another nice uh, aspect of this plant in terms of inflammation and heat is that in the Chinese medical system, traditional Chinese medicine has it as a remedy for summer heat. So it alleviates or reduces summer heat. And in doing so, it can be a really useful remedy for conditions like hay fever, eczema, and asthma even as well. Um, actually, it's quite good for the chest too. But that idea of it reducing inflammation, taking the heat out of the system, and again, you can kind of get uh, the idea from that, that that's something we very often want to do in stressful situations as well. Best way to prepare and take this herb, you can make a tea out of it, uh, uh, harvest the aerial parts, chop them and dry them, uh, and then just, just like you would any other tea that we've talked about. Uh, but actually, I think one of the best ways to take this is as a tincture. A tincture is uh, extracting the plant's properties into a mix of alcohol and water. If you want to know how to make a, a tincture, check out our tincture making uh, video on YouTube as well. Now, of course, if you don't want to grow the herb and have all the business of cutting it up and drying it and making medicines out of it, fortunately, uh, it's been done for you. You can buy this online in certain shops and uh, herbal supplies and even herbalists actually might sell you a little bit if you talk to them nicely. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe to the channel for updates on our future videos. And if you've got any requests or suggestions for future videos, please pop them in the comments box. We'd love to hear from you.